Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel of Books and Soul. Today I wanted to do a vlog. I did one before on my channel for The Hobbit, so if you haven't seen it yet, I'll link it up for you up here so you can check it out if you'd like. This time the vlog will be about Anne of Green Gables. Uh, Anne of Green Gables, written by Lucy Mont Montgomery. This is one of these books that I've already read. Um, I've actually mentioned be it before, but I've been introduced to this series uh, by my mom uh, when I was about 10 years old. She loved it and she introduced me and my sisters to it and we really got into the books. I've only read it in Polish, so I've actually never read it in its original. So I'm very excited to read it in English and see what it sounds like also in the original. The series is basically, I think, seven or eight books. Um, Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, Anne of the Island, Anne of Windy Poplars, Anne's House of Dreams, Anne of Ingleside, Rainbow Valley, and Rilla of Ingleside. So there are eight books in the series, but this vlog will only be about the first one. That's the one I'm currently reading, so Anne of Green Gables. And I'm so excited to be getting back into these books, into the world of Anne of Green Gables. And I thought I'd take you guys along on this reading experience of going back to Anne of Green Gables. So like I said before, uh, this is my first time reading Anna Green Gables in the original. Um, I've, before I've, uh, I've read it only in Polish, um, in the Polish translation, which actually is a very good translation. It really definitely, as now I'm reading this, it definitely conveys the kind of whimsical, warm, funny, cozy type of uh, writing that Lucy Montgomery has very descriptive, very almost poetic sometimes. Uh, sometimes the, the descriptions of Montgomery, of nature, of what Prince Edward's Island looks like in spring, in summer, in fall, in winter, is just so beautiful. The language, the style, the way she is able to get inside the head of an 11 year old girl with this crazy imagination. And just the stories she comes up with, the little anecdotes, the little things that happen to Anne, she's able to portrayed them and give them to us in a way that's just amazing. I, I, I really think she's a wonderful writer. So for those of you who maybe are not so familiar with Anne of Green Gables, it's basically um, a story about a young orphan girl. Uh, she's 11 years old, like I said, and Anne Shirley, who is being moved around from one family to another. Um, she is never really truly wanted by any single family. She finally ends up in an orphanage. Uh, where she stays, I think, four or five months, and then finally there's a request for her. Somebody wants to adopt her. The little problem is, and this I don't think is a spoiler because that's basically, this happens in the first two, three chapters of, of this book. What happens is there's a mistake. The family that she's sent to actually wanted a little boy instead of a little girl to help out with chores and stuff on the farm. So Anne shows up and she's not who they wanted. Uh, Obviously, this is a horrible and traumatic ex experience for Anne. She's devastated. Uh, but by a certain turn of events, things happen and she actually stays in that household. So the family is actually a brother and a sister who have never married and they live together at their beautiful, beautiful house at Green Gables. And that's where Anne, in the end, stays. And so new a new adventure a new life basically begins for Anne who's constantly been moved around from a family from one family to another never really had a home never really had uh, a place where where she felt loved and she felt like part of a family so this is basically the plot of the story and we do follow 
uh, follow Anne um, and her various adventures as she grows up in this family and in this little town of Avonlea. So I'm gonna go back to reading this, I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and it's reading time. incredible. It's really amazing for me to see how a child, she's 11, right? So a little girl, girl who's been through so much traumatic, like really sad experiences. Um, she lost her parents. She was never really wanted. She kept being pushed around and used more as a servant, uh, never really part of any family. It's just amazing to see that a child who's been through so much, has seen so much and, and has experienced such horrible and sad things really, was able to still retain this faith in humanity, in the world, this innocent amazement at everything in the world. She is able to look at the things around her and it's like she's seeing them for the first time, which often she is seeing things for the first time, but she looks at the things around her with her eyes wide open, just trying to, you know, take it all in with this relish and just it's amazing and she's such an inspiration uh, to me and also a reminder to never lose this kind of a gaze at reality where I am just uh, in awe and grateful because that's in the end that's what she's so grateful for everything. She makes friends with uh, trees and plants and she gives names to things. She gets so attached and so completely gives herself into everything uh, she does, everything she sees, everything she experiences. She's all there, lives things so intensely. That, that's, that's the thing. She's, she, I, I feel like almost every day with her is she wants to take the most out of it, take, squeeze it to, <laughs> squeeze it to its maximum and uh, just experience everything to the fullest. Of course, there are also sad moments and difficulties that this girl faces, but also those she experiences super intensely. So I feel like it's either she's super happy or she's super sad, but it's like her heart can never just be mediocre. Some of the things she says are so wise and just so really inspirational and they make you, they make you think, uh, wow, that's, that's actually true and, and why do I not look at things that way? Or, or, or why, why don't I start looking at things this way? That's incredible about Anne. So for example, she can say things like, oh, Matthew, isn't it a wonderful morning? It's winter time and everything's covered in snow and just beautiful. The world looks like something God has just imagined for his own pleasure, doesn't it? She also has this amazing relationship with nature where she is completely in awe whenever she sees beautiful flowers, beautiful trees, the blossoming cherry trees, the lake of shining waters that she, you know, she calls this beautiful pond. Or for example, she says, uh, kindred spirits are not so scarce as I used to think. It's splendid to find out there are so many of them in the world. So 
this again this faith in humanity this faith in seeing okay there are good people people are actually good people are not so hard to find very hopeful just very bright and really just wonderful The last things I want to say about this book, last things that struck me as I was reading it, uh, are the following. So the first one is imagination. Anne is a girl whose imagination is beyond your average imagination. She's uh, able to imagine herself in different situations, in different places. Her, her imagination is so rich, so developed, probably because she never had anything. She knew that she had to imagine things in order to kind of feel like she has them or you know feel like like her life is better than what it actually was she needed her imagination to live the harsh reality with which she was faced so her imagination helped her survive on the one hand but it's interesting because as Anne's reality becomes more beautiful as she now has a home and she's part of a family that loves her. A lot of the things she imagined uh, come true or a lot of the dreams that she had come true. The reality that she's living is slowly replacing that imagination of hers, but it's not. she's not losing it. Her heart doesn't change, her imagination is there, but she's allowing herself to live reality and to enjoy enjoy the beauty of the reality that she's kind of unexpectedly now experiencing. So it's very interesting, this idea of imagination and how that also develops as the story goes, as Anne grows up. I think in the later books that will become even more of, a, of, a, of an important idea and theme that Montgomery will want to develop. The other thing that is so wonderful is Marilla and Matthew, the, um, the two siblings that have never married and that decide to take in Anne. Both completely different. Matthew being his silent self and being completely like just the sweetest human being towards Anne. Um, and then Marilla with her strict rules and, and morals, but who has this loving motherly heart in the end. Uh, so I think it's what's beautiful about them is the fact that against all like rational, whatever plans and projects they had made for themselves, they wanted a boy, a girl has shown up, we don't need her, let's give her back. They actually decide to open their hearts and to open their homes and to give her love and to give her warmth, which she never had. And they also are beginning to see how much they needed Anne, how much they needed to open up maybe their rigid, kind of settled lives and let someone in, love someone, risk it, risk opening their home and opening their hearts to someone else. For me, this is one of the most beautiful things about this book. And like I said, I really recommend it to all of you to read this book. It's, it's amazing. It's really just a treat. I highly recommend it again. <laughs> so that's it for this reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave comments if you'd like. Let me know what you think of Anna Green Gables, what you think of the series, of the books. I would love to see what your thoughts are. So I hope to see you all very soon. Bye!